Good day. Welcome to EnviroTube News number five. Today we're on the roof of Council Chambers, level five, and behind me you can see a whole lot of bush. You can also see a lot of cranes. This gives you a good overview of the sort of area we're working in. Bushland, urban development, and we're trying to preserve this uh, bushland and this wild environment to try and have it coexist with urban areas. Today we're also going to have Sophia Findlay show us a working model of a house in a situation, an urban situation, and what happens when rain falls. Because a big part of what we do is actually environmental education, to try and explain to people what's actually happening in the urban areas in terms of ecosystems. Let me tell you a little secret about Level 5 of Council Chambers. Where we're currently standing, I have a 500 litre tub filled with native fish. This tub is filled with fire tower gudgeon, and we place them in swimming pools that have been converted into ponds. Why don't we have a little look? You know, anyone in, with a rooftop garden could do this sort of thing. It's a permanent source of water. Any bird that's around, like the swallows, they can use this water. And it's just fantastic for native plants, aquatic plants, and for native fish. Nestled in amongst the air conditioner units, on this roof, we have literally hundreds of fire tower gudgeon. Now, you might notice it's painted white. That's because it actually cooks, just like I'm cooking, absolutely cooks on this roof, and we need the white to reflect the heat away. You can see some beautiful lilies. You can see some interesting duckweed, which is actually a native. There's a whole range of great plants you can put in these small bodies of water that make it much more satisfactory for the fish. As I mentioned in the introduction, we have Sophia Finlay with us, Water and Catchments Officer, and she's going to explain exactly what this model's for and how we use it in Kringai Council. Okay, there's a few different things that we show on this model. Uh, the most obvious one is that we've got two different types of houses. So we've got the traditional house that you find around the place and then we've got like a super sustainable house. This is the traditional house um, and the traditional features of it are a lot of people like to have the dark colour roofs. It looks really good but the problem is the dark colour absorbs all the heat from the sunlight and obviously that means you've got going to need to spend more money and, and more energy cooling your house down with air conditioning. Um, there's a lack of eaves on the side of the house and once again they do the same thing. Eaves create a little bit of shade and cool your house down. Uh, there's no water tank on this house uh, so obviously all the water needs to come from potable water supplies um, for the garden and inside the house. Flushing good drinking water down the toilet is not probably the best idea. So you're going to show us what happens when it actually rains, aren't you? Absolutely. Let's unleash a thunderstorm. <laughs> okay. So what happens, the water runs off people's driveways onto the road into the vegetated swale. And as you can see, when I put quite a lot of water on it, the filter goes into the swale and starts um, filtering through a special media. Um, the, the soil in here, the special media, filters all the pollutants out of the water and slows it down um, rather than just going straight into the gutter along the row here. Uh, this is just the normal gutter. As you can see, there's a pit and a drain down the bottom where it goes straight down to the creek. It takes all the pollutants with it. The swale slows down the water, gets it to go more slowly, filters the pollutants out and delays the water doing damage to the creeks. The middle one here, where the water's just sitting on the top, you have a, a big front yard sometimes. People don't quite look after their grass. Um, maybe park their cars on top of it and it compacts the soil. And when you don't look after your soil, this is a good example of what happens. The water kind of just sits on top of the soil, um, stays there, maybe causes some erosion and um, takes all those sediments and pollutants down to the creek as well, which isn't good. We don't want too much sediment in the creeks because it covers up all the habitat for the little fishies and bugs that live down there. Okay, so when it rains on the super sustainable house, there's a couple of things. At the, at the back here, we've got a water tank, and so some, some of the water would go into the water tank. Um, and at the front, the most important bit, is that what we've got here is a little constructed rain garden. So all the, the excess water runs off the property, goes into, the, into this filter garden, or rain garden as they're known, and the water slowly filters down through the garden, through the soil below, and it filters out all the pollutants, slows the water down, and acts in a similar way, similar way to the swale. So I'll what is a swale? A swale is like a vegetated drain, really, like a grassy drain. Instead of having a gutter with concrete, uh, you've got a bit of a ditch that has plants in it, and the plants and the soil together act to filter out the pollutants. So are they better than gutters? Are they better than concrete? Yeah, well it depends where you put them. Sometimes you want to have a gutter, you want to have concrete because you don't want things to flood. 
Um, but if that's not such a big if issue, if you've got a nice flat area, it's much better to have a swale where you can slow the water down, filter out the pollutants and help your catchments and your creeks. So does council let you build these rain gardens? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can build big ones in your front yard like this or you can just build little ones in like a planter box um, and make them really easily. Um, you just need to remember if you're building a big one, um, you may need a DA depending on how big it is. And if you're connecting um, the drainage layer of your rain garden, so your bottom of your rain garden, if you're connecting it back to the stormwater system, you need to get a licensed plumber to do that connection. Right, excellent. Well, very busy time of the year for us. We've got the Bush Care Christmas Party and we've got the Wild Things Christmas Party. For Bush Care, we've actually got a fantastic speaker called Peter Andrews. He's gonna look at weeds and the role they play in the ecosystem. He takes the relatively controversial point of view that weeds are nature's way of healing a degraded ecosystem, which of course is going to be quite confronting for a number of our bush care volunteers. I'm looking forward to it to see what he ac actually has to say. And then for the Wild Things Christmas Party, we have a local bee expert, uh, Adrian Lewis. He's going to bring a working Dragona hive to the Christmas Party and you can actually see through Perspex what's actually happening inside a hive, an insight that you very, very rarely get with this fantastic little creature. Well, it was really great having Sophia explain that model to us. I think it's really important to, to get the residents to understand that when rain falls, it just doesn't disappear somewhere. It actually has an impact. It goes into our creeks. It causes problems with pollution, with sort of erosion, and that there's ways to mitigate these effects. Looking forward very much to our next EnviroTube News, where we'll talk about what actually happened at our Christmas parties. See you then.